Today we're going to talk about preparing the samples for compressive strength testing. Um, we've got three sets of brick over here. As you see, they're half brick, and that's what you do when you uh, do the compressive test. You do a half brick. Earlier in some of the testing, we talked about when we cut a brick in half, and half the brick goes towards the absorption testing, and the other half goes towards compressive testing, and that's where we are now. We got two sets of modular brick here, one set of kings, and as you see, they're labeled one through five. Um, and this is a number that we use at the lab to keep track of which brick these are. Today we're going to show the king as far as putting the capping compound on, which is the step we're going to show today to prepare for the actual brick to be broken in the compression machine. We use a sulfur compound. Uh, the reason we use that is because it increases the, or it decreases the setting time required between the time you cap the brick and the time you can break it. It's only about a two hour time. There's also old types of um, things you can use that are more gypsum oriented, but most people have gone away from that because it, it takes, uh, it has to sit overnight before you can break them. Um, this is the kind of capping compound we use. We get it from a place over in Grand Prairie. Um, and if anybody ever needs information on where to get capping compound, you can certainly contact us here at the lab. Right here, we've got the pot that keeps it uh, in a liquid form, 290 degrees is the melting temperature for this particular compound. So basically we just leave this pot on about 300 degrees, it keeps it melted. As you see, he'll use whatever amount it takes to do these three sets of brick, get them capped, and then you'll refill the pot each day after you finish capping, and then it usually, overnight, it'll, it'll remelt, and by the time you come in for the next day, it'll be ready to do more brick. So we're gonna do king size brick today. Uh, there's a mold here that will fit king size brick. You've also got like another mold right over here for the smaller brick like modulars and queens. On some of the big brick like the Normans, utilities, things like that, you actually have to take a piece out here and do one at a time as opposed to two at a time. So we're going to let Tim take you through the process of how to cap these bricks. So he's going to take his half brick and you're going to be able to do two at a time with the mold here. You um, use this it's common, just PAM is basically what it is, Walmart brand. But uh, you spray that in there, and that will help to release the, um, the capping compound from the mold once it hardens enough to be able to pull it out. So you have your little ladle there. And if, you, if you're ever in a position where you're doing this, you, you just have to kind of, you know, get a feel for how much you need. Uh, you you want to use as little as you need as possible uh, to get a, a good surface, but you don't want to, you don't want to not put enough in there because then it, then, then it won't completely give you a good flat surface to do the compression strength test on. So he's going to put a ladle full in here. And you put the brick down right in the, in the center of that area of the mold. And like I said, with this one you can do two. So you do that and then basically you're going to let it sit for, it's going to end up being what Tim, about a minute usually, something like that. Depending on how much you put in there and the size of the brick. Uh, when you do the smaller brick you don't quite use as much material, but a minute, minute and a half. Um, and you'll, you'll be able to tell when it dries out because down here you'll see, you'll see it actually harden around the brick. You can kind of see the little puddles down in there and it'll turn a, a lighter color and that'll tell you that it's solidified enough to where you can pop the brick out. You ready? Okay, so now that the material is dried enough to take it out of the mold, he's going to what we call kind of break the mold. So he just taps the hammer to kind of break it loose from the metal pieces, takes the side rail out, and then slides the pieces out. And now what you'll see he'll do, he'll put the mold back together again. And if you're ever doing this, you got to be careful. Uh, some of this stuff gets fairly warm, especially as you do multiple sets of brick. So he gets everything set back up just like it was, sprays again, and then basically you're going to repeat the same process again and then you're going to put 
the brick back in on the other side so you'll get surfaces to break effectively from on both sides. So it's sort of like wash, rinse, repeat. And when you do it on the second side, you need to be a little careful because there's more weight on the brick. So you usually have to kind of put it down in there, there gently so you don't go too far. And basically the reason we do this is twofold. Um, it gives a nice flat surface when you go to actually do the breaking in the, in the compression machine. And it also, especially on brick that are really strong and really tight, when, when they have high compressive strength, they'll tend to kind of blow up. And having this capping compound on there keeps the pieces of brick from flying all over the place. As you, see, as you will see when we do the compression test itself, there is cages on there to keep it from getting out, but some pieces can still get out and this helps uh, contain those pieces. Now once this is done, these have to sit for a minimum of two hours to cure before you can actually do the compressive test itself. Now we've only done a couple of brick here, but this is kind of gives you an idea of what the capping compound looks like. It's sort of flat, chunky pieces. And basically you put it in the pot, fill it back up, and overnight it'll remelt or it'll, it, it'll, it'll melt in there with all the stuff that's already melted. You can come back the next day and do more sets of brick. Usually one pot, you can get up to four or five sets of brick if they're mods or queens. If they're bigger units, maybe three mm -hmm. sets in one pot. So we, we can do that about that many per day. Okay, in here we have the Forney compression machine that we're gonna actually use to crush the brick. Uh, over here we've got our five samples. Uh, we previously showed you how the brick are capped, and so now they've been curing for over two hours, and so they're ready to be crushed. And the first thing that he's going to do is measure each sample, uh, length and width, as that is used as part of the calculation, and we will see that after he breaks the samples. And we do this measurement to two decimal places, and it's in inches. And now we'll go ahead and turn the machine on and get it ready to go. He'll put the samples in lengthwise with the cut section always facing out, centered in the machine there to get the proper reading. You see we've got the safety cage on there helps keep the brick in the inside there when we get brick that are particularly strong and really pop. So basically he zeroes it out and it slowly moves up. The bottom actually moves up and, and meets the top plate there. And you hear it go right there. He slowed it down right there. When you get up to around 20,000 on the machine, you slow it down to a slower rate. And you'll basically just stand here and watch it until the brick either gives a good pop or in a lot of cases it'll just reach a certain level here and it'll stop going up. And normally after about 
three or four seconds. If it hasn't moved, then you'll know that it's done. You heard a little bit of a pop on that one, and now you see it's kind of frozen where it's at. So now he'll he knows that that's as far as it's going to go. Basically, you stop the plates, run it back down. He records that. And then we have all the information we need to calculate our compressive strength. Film it, or, and now you'll see it when he goes to toss it in the in the trash here. Usually they'll break into pieces if he drops them pretty hard or just throws it down in there. drop it in there. And that's just leftover capping compound. All right. So, the formula that we have for compressive strength is a fairly simple one. It's W, which is actually just the reading from the compression machine that we just saw over the area of the sample that he measured before he put it into the machine. So in this case, the reading on the machine was 67,310, and that's in pounds. Then your area, it was 4.81 was your length in inches, and 3 point, or 2.67, excuse me, was your width. So you take the calculator. So this will be a parenthesis, so we'll do the area first. So we've got 4.81 times 2.67. So whoops. 4.81 times 2.67. That gives us 12.84. That's square inches. So 12.84 inches squared. So now we have 67,310 pounds divided by 12.84 square inches, and that gives us 5,242 PSI. Now, the standards for compressive strength for ASTM are as follows. For it to be certified SW, the average of the five samples that we start with here needs to be greater than or equal to 3,000. As you can see, like a brick like this one was well over that. And no individual brick out of the five can be below 2,500. They all have to be less than or equal to 2,500. If you drop into the MW rating, your average for all five has to be greater than or equal to 2,500. And no individual brick out of those can be less than 2,200.